Hello, this is Mr. Carter. I'm uh, here to help you guys out with a few of our problems. The first one that I want to take our time with is from chapter 6, number 3. And here's what it says. It says, a baseball player slides into third base with an initial speed of 4.0 meters per second. If the coefficient of kinetic friction between the player and the ground is 0.46, how far does the player slide before coming to rest? Now this, of course, combines our uh, knowledge of Newton's second law with a little bit of kinematics. All right, so here's our situation. We have um, our ground here. We have our player who is sliding into uh, wherever it is that he's sliding. Um, oh, into third base, sorry. And he has a V initial, which is equal to 4.0 meters per second. And they have given us the fact that there is friction here, and he is sliding, so that makes it a coefficient, the kinetic friction. So the coefficient of kinetic friction in this problem is... Uh, 0.46 and we of course know he's going to come to rest so his V final uh, over here at this end is going to be equal to zero they would like to know how far he gets they would like to know how far he gets as he is going through this deceleration now that means we need to know the acceleration otherwise there's no way we're ever going to find this now, luckily, the coefficient of kinetic friction here lets us know that we can use Newton's second law, F equals ma. So what we're going to do is we're first going to start off with that. Our acceleration is going to be equal to the sum of our forces divided by our mass. Now, what forces do we have? Well, we, of course, have his weight downward, we have an equivalent amount of normal force upward, but more importantly, and those guys are going to cancel out and not do anything, in the interesting direction, the x direction, we have a frictional force going back in this direction. And of course, that's a force of kinetic friction, if we want to point the details out. Now, so that's our net force, the force of kinetic friction. And so the force of kinetic friction is equal to mu sub k multiplied by n, the normal force. Well, that's still over our mass. The normal force, we said, is equal to the weight. Well, the weight is equal to mass times gravity. And so we can make a quick substitution here. And our acceleration is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times our substitution of mass times gravity for his weight, which is equivalent to his normal force. We are still dividing that up by our mass. And notice that we don't need the mass of the player, which is really good because they didn't give it to us. So his acceleration is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by g. So that's going to be 0.46, just a ratio. Basically, this is saying it's 46% of the acceleration from gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. And so 0.46 times 9.81, uh, 4.5, two sig figs in this problem. If we wanted to, we could give it one more and round it off at the end. Let's go for that. 4.51 meters per second squared. Now, this acceleration, if we say that this direction is x and that direction is y, this acceleration is negative. I'm only assigning the sign at the end of the determination of the acceleration. All right, we're almost there. Now it's kinematics time. We have an initial velocity, a final velocity. We want delta x, and we have an acceleration. That means we're going to use our fourth kinematic equation. V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2 times the acceleration times our displacement. We are solving for our displacement, plus we know that our final velocity is actually equal to 0. So we're going to subtract our V initial squared over there. So we end up with our formula for delta x being subtraction over there, 
negative the initial squared divided by two times our acceleration. Well, we're still gonna get a positive delta x because our acceleration is gonna go in as negative. So we've got negative of our 4.0 meters per second. That whole thing gets squared, so that's 16 meters squared over second squared, and it's negative, divided by two times our negative 4.51 meters per second squared. So we've got 16 meters squared over second squared divided by, um, looks like 9.2, 9.02. Better double check that. Um, 4.51 times two, yep, 9.02. So 16 divided by 9.02 leaves us with one point. At this point, we better go to the correct number of significant digits, 1.8. 1.8 meters. We had meters squared over second squared. Down here we had meters over second squared. Everything cancels out except for one set of meters there, and that's our final answer. That was fun.